If somebody presents a role to me that where, where he's gonna be a drug smuggler or a bandito or uh, he's doing uh, ugly things to kids, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Famous Cast Words. I'm Lynn Marie Rosenberg, and we are bringing you this episode from my home. I have here today with me actor singer Emilio Delgado. You may know Emilio from his 40 plus years as Luis on Sesame Street. You might not know him as the voice of Boar's Head Meats on Spanish radio. <laughs> Hi, Emilio. Hi, Lynn. I'm so happy to have you here today. I'm glad to be here with you. So you were on Sesame Street from 1971 to 2015, is that correct? Well, then, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get that part, that part that became a defining well, role for your life? I'm telling you, it's a long story, but I'll try to make it as short as I can. Tell as long as you like. I was uh, an actor in Hollywood, young actor, just starting out and uh, trying to get represented on TV, you know, looking for a job. Mm -hmm. No jobs, mm -hmm. anywhere. <laughs> In particular for a Chicano actor, I imagine. Exactly. So, uh, you know, it was, it was not easy. But uh, one day I got a phone call out of the blue, you know, from New York. And uh, somebody said on the, on the phone, Mr. Delgado, we wonder if you'd like to audition for our show, Sesame Street. And uh, I was looking at my last unemployment check, <laughs> and uh, I didn't know where this was coming from. So I said, sure, yes. And uh, so the producer, uh, David Connell, came out to Los Angeles from New York. And I interviewed with him for about 10, 15 minutes, something like that. They just wanted to get a feel, what I looked like, what I sounded like, whatever, I don't know. Well, he asked me things like, do you know, do you, can you speak Spanish? And I said, yes, of course. And he says, uh, would you shave off your mustache? Because I had a, that's the one year I had a mustache. <laughs> And I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'll shave anything. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> but, <laughs> Eyebrows, <laughs> total you know? hair, you got it. But he said, thank you very much, after about 15, 20 minutes, and that was it. Didn't hear for a month, didn't hear anything, so I just kind of kissed it off, another audition, <laughs> out the window, right? But then I got another call, and then John Stone, the, the producer, director, writer, he was everything on the show. He came out to Los Angeles, and he interviewed me. And I guess uh, he just wanted to feel me out and see what I sounded like, what I looked like, what kind of person I was. I didn't audition. I mean, I didn't sing. I didn't act. They didn't have anything uh, to audition with. He just talked with me. And after about 15 minutes, he just looked at me and he said, well, if you want to work with us, be in New York, October 11th. I think it says a lot about the importance of Sesame Street and the importance of the humans of Sesame Street that the audition was really just who you are as a person. Yeah. Because um, I think the the human beings, as wonderful as the Muppets are and as wonderful as the animation is, there was something so special about seeing lots of different kinds of human beings yeah. and them bringing their heart to a role. Well, see, that was that was the thing with with John Stone. I mean, he this guy was amazing. I mean, he was like a total genius in every aspect of theater and performing. And I think John Stone, as the sort of like the, the father of the whole thing, wanted it to be as real as possible. Consequently, he didn't want actors, right. he wanted real people, yeah. which is what we all were. And we all, we all came together and it was like, uh, we knew each other already, like we were a family. For me, uh, being the, the Chicano who uh, came in from Los Angeles, where most, most of us Mexican-Americans at that time were from the West. Yeah. There were very few Mexican-Americans here in, in New York. I mean, it, was, it was all Puerto Ricans, you know, and boring, Borinqueños, you know. Yeah. Uh, but all of a sudden, here we were in, in, in the neighborhood in, in New York. The Chicanos are here, you know. <laughs> And you get to be the face of all the Yeah, them. there it is, you know, Luis. <laughs> they always threw stuff in, like in Spanish, you know. Even whatever the whatever the uh, the the script was, a lot of times I changed it. I would ask them, I'd say, what if I change this to say it in Spanish here or whatever? And they, and they would be very amenable to that because, of course, they wanted to bring in the kids that didn't speak English, you know. Uh, and I would throw in things like, you know, the, the first time that I saw Big Bird walk on, my line was, Big Bird. I didn't say, Big Bird, I said, Pajaro. 
Nice. And, and, and we did it, and then uh, they, they, they cut the scene, they, they stopped the scene, and, and then John said, what, what does that mean? Bottom, <laughs> whatever. I said, that means bird. He says, oh, okay. So they, they had a little conference, you know, in the, in the, in the room, and they said, okay, keep it. Call him Pajaro. I love so that. So I called him Pajaro from then on, every time I saw him. The representation on that show worked in, in two important ways, I think. One is that kids who were Latino, kids who were Mexican, kids who were black, were seeing themselves represented in public television. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, for a white kid like me, coming up in the suburbs, you were the first Mexican I knew. You, you know, Gordon was, was probably yeah. one of the first black people I knew. Really? And I think there's something so powerful about what it means to see everyone. Yeah. You know, I think, how have you seen representation change over your years in the industry in terms of who we're actually getting to see? You know, when I first started out in, in Hollywood, uh, yeah, there had been, uh, you know, uh, Latinos and Latinas on movies and television. The, the big people, you know, like Anthony Quinn and Cesar Romero and, and all those guys, I mean, they'd been around for a long time. But then, but then everything was changing, and there's, there really wasn't any representation of the of actual people. You know, most of the uh, most of the uh, roles that I went out for were either for bandits or, you know, gang members or uh, whatever. You know, and the women were prostitutes or maids or whatever it was. Those were the only parts that were around right. for us. Um, things have changed a little bit, um, but it's still got a long way to go, I think, it's today. A very long way to go, which we yeah. will see when we get to the breakdowns, but we won't go no, there. Don't get yet. me started. <laughs> I think the celebrity that comes from Sesame Street is so different than your basic movie stars. and You're really part of four generations worth, or three generations worth of humans developing educationally in the United well, States. I couldn't have said it better myself, Thank I tell you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you that over the years, I also went out into the world uh, doing little shows here and there and meeting people and families. And people your age and, and, and even older that watch the show, as soon as they see us, they revert to five-year-old. Absolutely. Uh, because it was such an important part of their life, you know? Yeah. Uh, Latchkey kids, I mean, they come up to me and said, you're, you're the only person that I saw during the day because my mom was working or my dad was working or whatever. You know, so we saw your show and you were our friends, you know, and you taught me this and you taught me that. So, yeah, we were part of the family and we still are. I can remember a couple of instances. One of them was this young woman came up and she looked Mexican-American and she was crying, you know, and she said, I'm from Colorado in this little town, I can't remember the name of the town, up in the mountains. Our family was the only Mexican family in the whole town. Yeah. And when I turned on the TV, you were the only other person that looked like me. Yeah. You were the only one, and I, I couldn't wait to turn on Sesame Street so, just so that I could see you. I mean, yeah. that alone was amazing, you know? So since you are Mexican-American, I thought we would look today at what sort of language pops up in the casting world for Latino and specifically Mexican roles. Oh, boy. Yeah, get ready. Hi. <laughs> This language, of course, comes from breakdowns, and breakdowns are little bits of text that are used in the casting world to define what a project is looking for. First, I thought we would look at some character names. There's no shortage of creative monikers. Coyote or coyote. <laughs> yeah. Mexican bandito, or it should be bandido, come on. <laughs> El Caboose. There you go. Hey. Hi. I've run into those. <laughs> I bet. And do make sure you've honed your counting skills. Thug number one. Aye. Bandits number one, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Writers seem particularly interested in your manliness. A tough looking guy. Very macho looking. <laughs> Lots of testosterone, plenty of attitude. <laughs> Though this shouldn't come as a surprise given the lifestyle you'll be asked to play. Hot-headed thug. Gangster look. Look or could look like gang members. A true cholo. 
I love the look or could look like gang. Isn't look, it as actors we're supposed to possibly look, look like many or things? Could look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we just do a little bit more, like uh, maybe uh, put a gold chain on. That's right, or m more mustache. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, sometimes you will get to play against type. He's a killer with a heart. In general, it seems Mexican actors can expect to portray characters from one particular industry. A cartel middleman, of course. A drug lord, a lot of those. Formerly a drug mule. Formerly. Yeah, formerly. <laughs> so what's he do now? And if you're lucky, you just might be the best in the biz. A legendary drug smuggler. His particular skill involves hiding product inside of him itself. <laughs> Whatever that picture that conjures. Oh, up. I don't want to picture anything. <laughs> These things come up. They sent me a script one time where literally they had this one guy who was supposed to be a, a Latino of some kind uh, and said uh, that he wore pointed shoes so that he could kill the cockroaches in the corners. Oh, come on. <laughs> that was in the script. As the character description? As the, the character description. And I read that and, and I looked at it and I thought, no, this is what I would never do. You know? yeah. I just called the agent and said, tell him to change that or just do nothing with this thing. This is ridiculous. Yeah. You know? How often do you say no or have you had to say no to I things? I've said no uh, sometimes, yeah. Because of Before. this sort of representation because issue? Because of that, yeah. yeah. They're, they're ethnic slurs. I mean, they're stereotypes of, of people, not the, not the way people really are, my people really are, you yeah. know? I mean, we're, we're, we're like Luis and Maria. See, they're a perfect family on Sesame Street. You know, here they are. They have a family. They run a business together. They're part of the neighborhood. They're friendly. They work. Yeah. I mean, you know, regular people, right? Yeah. But uh, if uh, somebody uh, uh, presents a role to me that where, where he's going to be a drug smuggler or a bandito or uh, he's doing uh, ugly things to kids, I'm not going to do that. So you've had a career that has lasted now 40 plus years. What sort of roles are you going out for now and how has that changed over the years? Yeah, well, it seems because of my age now, of course, time has passed. <laughs> uh, I'll be doing a lot of grandfather roles, mm -hmm. yeah, grandpa and what have you. That's fine, you know, I'm going right along with it. Uh, but um, of course, the, the good parts in terms of film and television are, seem to be a little sparse right now. But uh, I'm always looking forward to doing an excellent role somewhere. Um, but, but theater, in terms of theater, I get to do all kinds of different kind of roles, you know? It's interesting. I've, I've seen television do better in terms of trans representation, um, ethnicity representation, mm -hmm. disability representation is doing better currently than theater is. But it's interesting that in terms of age representation, mm -hmm. theater does seem to offer more opportunities. I think so, you know, especially with somebody like me, <clears throat> the age that I'm at right now, um, it, it's, you know, like television and film, if you say you're, if they ask for somebody in their 60s, you gotta look like somebody in, your six, in their 60s. Now, um, if I, if I say that I'm 79, which I am, and, and the part calls for somebody who's 60, they're just gonna toss it out, out the window, you know? Because just by looking at the number. But if I show up and I can look like I'm in my 60s, why not, you know? Yeah. But it doesn't work like that all the time. I think you look like you're in your 50s. Really? Yes. Ooh, thank you. You and my dad. Oh, I know, <laughs> I, I knew you were a good friend of mine, that's why. <laughs> Look, you can pay me later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here, and it is such an honor. The the five year old inside of me is is consistently amazed that we are friends now. But yes. thank you so much for being here with me today. You're very welcome. I love you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Take care of each other and be professional.